Hey everyone, it's Connor from Coifin here. Today I want to showcase a way that one of our users was using the model portfolio feature to create their own subgroups and track the performance of those. This inspired us to create a video to show you how you can do that for yourself. So we can see here, this user has shared that they're creating their own baskets of securities, subsectors, things like marijuana, silver, copper, footwear, water, particular themes or baskets of stocks. And they're using a combination of Coifin watch list model portfolios, and the lots of charts feature to do this. In their view, this is essentially allowing them to create their own ETFs where they can track the performance of these themes over the quarters, years, and also see how they compare against benchmarks. So in this video, we're going to focus on a specific use case, but I'm hoping this will inspire some of you and demonstrate how you can interlink these features of models, watch lists, and lots of charts to create your own unique custom assets inside of Coifin. So this begins with the model portfolio feature. So we'll head there now. And we can see here we have a summary page of all the different models we've created. If I jump into this restaurants model, for example, we can see that we've set this up with various US restaurants. We could add other ones in there from across the world as well. But essentially what we're building here is a model that's then going to be a good proxy for that basket of companies. You can also use ETFs to do this as well, but if you really want to nail down the customizability and hand select the companies that go in there, the preferred waiting periods and rebalancing, then this is how you're going to do that. So to demonstrate, we'll first create a model and then we'll show you how all of these things become linked. So we'll go into the model portfolio feature, we'll hit create new, and this time we will create a footwear basket. So we'll talk about this stuff on the left-hand side in just a moment, but first I'm going to pick a few stocks that represent this subgroup. So let's say these are the companies we want to represent this basket. A few things to consider here. Number one, allocation. So if you go down here on the drop-down, you can equally weight these. I think for a benchmark, that's something you might want to do at the inception date. And you have a few different options down here on the left-hand side as well. So the rebalancing period, if you really want to allow the individual constituents in here to show you when they're outperforming, I would recommend rebalancing annually so that you can reset as the cycle changes, but you also have enough runway for those individual constituents to kind of influence the basket. Conversely, if you had this set at daily rebalancing, let's just say that Crocs goes on a 200% run in the year. Each day, you're going to be capping the influence it has on that basket if you're daily rebalancing, because you're going to push it back down to 12.5%. Alternatively, if you allow it to run for the year, you'll be able to see the influence that that performance has had on the basket as a whole. But you can make these choices for yourself. Because we're creating a basket, we likely don't want to have fees, so we'll set collection period to none, and we won't enter a fee. As far as date selection is concerned, you have two options. So first common date is going to show you the earliest conceivable date that this basket of companies could have been created based on IPO date. If I go to custom, for example, and change this to a year before, we're going to see that all birds, which didn't IPO until November 2021, would not be allowed to be in this index. What you can do in this instance, if you really do want to start the portfolio from an earlier date, is you can take the IPO date, which is November 3rd, you can remove all birds from the initial allocation, see what the first custom date would have been. So all of these companies have been publicly traded since 2006. You can then create a new custom allocation period here on the date that all birds went public, which was November 3rd. You can then add all birds to the basket and you can equally weight it here. And you'll see there's a 0% allocation here and we have equally weighted here. So on this date, you now reflect all birds in the portfolio, but you can have a longer track record of performance if you just include these companies from 2006 onwards. So we've now created this model. This is the basket we want to represent. And we can go ahead and create that. So what this does is create a model portfolio asset inside of Coifin. You obviously have your pie chart here. You have performance and holdings data. You can flick through various exposure charts, performance, historical returns, risk analysis, and the holdings matrix, which is really just useful if you have funds in the portfolio. But the next step to be able to analyze these all in conjunction is to head to watch lists. 
So we can see here, I've created a watch list of some other thematic models I've created, and we're going to go ahead and add a new one. Let's go to model portfolios up here, and we're going to search for footwear. So now I have all of my nine or 10 models in this watch list. We can observe price performance data here by picking some performance related columns. We can, we can also pull these individual securities into a chart by clicking on them like this. And then we can also add total return series in there as well, if we wanted to, and we can add other models to the chart as well. However, if we want to view them all in one space, the user that we mentioned at the beginning was using the lots of charts feature. So we'll head to lots of charts under analytics. In the lots of charts feature, we have a dedicated video on this, but it allows you to chart many companies from an index holdings from an ETF or using a watch list. So we can see here that we have the models watch list. I'm going to pull that up. And now we can see all of our models here. And I'm going to change the layout so that I can see all nine of them. And you have various options for chart templates here. So we can have historical price. We can have performance. If you want to build something that's custom, the thing to do is to create a chart template. So let's go quickly into our graph. We have the restaurants basket selected. I'll change this to black. And depending on what kind of view you want to build, you could put RSI in there. You could create a relative indicator as well. So if we type in relative data series here, we can see the performance spread between this basket and the SPY. We could change that to year to date and we can see restaurants are outperforming by about 37%. In this case, I'm just going to add a simple moving average. We want the 50 day We'll change the color of that to orange and thicken the line. And this is the chart template that we want to view. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as a chart template model SMA. So now we can head back to lots of charts and apply that chart template to this view that we've selected. So model SMA, now we've got that 50 day moving average. We've got the price there as well. And we can see all of our baskets here and change the time period. If we just want quarter to date information, year to date information, Alternatively, we could create another chart template. Let's say instead of having the price, we want to show the total return. Just so we have a very simple view, we don't have to read through the lines. We can just see the information as it's presented to us. Just simple total return. And then below that, we might want the relative to the S&P. So we've got the ticker there. You can choose other models or other benchmarks as well if you want. I'm just going to make this a simple black line. And we will save this template again as models total return. And now when we jump back to lots of charts, we if we have loads of models in here, I only have nine, we can flick between them using the arrow keys. And we can also quickly change chart templates here as well so that we can have different views. So on a year-to-date basis, quickly, we can see that restaurants are up about 45%. That's about 37% ahead of the SPY. Meme stocks as well, doing pretty well, up 23%, up 15.8% ahead of the SPY. Tobacco is trailing by about 6%. Food delivery is about flat. This just optimizes your time greatly. And when you set these up in Coifin, the benefits of having these as assets will just grow over the quarters and years. And at any time, you can go back in and make tweaks, add new constituents to these baskets, or change the weighting allocation, whatever your preference is. It might take a bit of time to set up initially, but it's one of those things that will really add value to how you use Coifin. A quick tip for you, if you're looking to make a bunch of these models, what I would recommend is opening up two separate pages, one with the model creation flow here, and the other one using a screener, you could rely on some of the universe criteria in the screener. So if we head to a screener and we're just looking at US names here, or maybe we want to expand that to US and Europe, perhaps we want to then go to universe criteria and look at industry. So here we have plenty of industries that you can use as a benchmark as to what kind of companies go in there. So if we want to go to automobiles, we can see that we have about 16. We can then run that screen. And this gives us a base of, okay, here's all the US and European companies that meet that criteria. We could use these in a basket. Alternatively, you can pick and choose which ones go in there. So in your view, if you think that Starbucks could be included in a fast food basket or a restaurant basket, 
or consumer discretionary, whatever way you want to pick and choose these baskets is up to you, but the screener can help you save a bit of time there as well. So this use case utilizes four unique features inside of Coifin, and they all kind of interweave between each other. So you have model portfolios to create these custom assets and edit them over time. You have watch lists to group them into one space. You have the lots of charts feature, which will allow you to view them all in a visual format and flick through them seamlessly. And then you have chart templates as well, which will dictate how you want to view them. This is a really great use case and something that I'm going to set up for myself personally. But you can also use it to track other model portfolios, whether they're client portfolios, your own simulations. And I'm sure some of you will have some other great ideas as well. The goal of this was just to give you some inspiration, teach you how you can interweave these different features together to create something super valuable and useful for your process. If you have any questions, you can drop a comment in the comment section below. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Coifin Charts, or you can email our help desk, which is help at Thank you.